So I'll just uh, get started here and introduce myself. My name is Monica. I'm at Duncan Mill Hive. Oh, he put Queen on again. Mitch is playing around. So I'm at Duncan Mill Hive and we are a co-working space in North York, fairly new since June last year. And we are a bit of a kind of collective. We have the Young and Eglinton Hive at Young and Eglinton in Midtown Toronto, and also the original, the Village Hive in Markham. And Charlotte Kirby, who founded that, um, sends her regrets that she couldn't be on the call today. She actually was on another call as well. So said that, I'm sorry, Jean-Marie, for missing this. But um, the Village Hive and the Mark are the Duncan Mill Hive and Young and Eglinton. Uh, we're a co-working facilities that have private offices that people can rent month to month or on uh, an hourly or a daily basis. And we have co-working spaces, which means you can come in and rent a desk for a month if you want and get a membership that way. Or you want to come in maybe three times a month or something like that. So it's a really great space for you to meet other like-minded perhaps entrepreneurs, some remote workers. So it's it's a really neat way for you to get together and meet other people, but you know, be focused and not sit at home with the laundry calling and the dishes and everything else. So this past week in Toronto, we've had um, quite a few more people join because they're just so up to here with the working from home. And it's been really nice because you can socialize safely. We have a really big space here, about 8,000 square feet. And we have meeting room and boardroom and stuff like that. And at Young and Eglinton, they have offices on different floors as well. And uh, the Village Hive is a very cool 18th century schoolhouse. So that's really neat. But all right, let's get started. John Marie is our guest speaker today. And he's going to tell you a little bit about himself. But we've known him from the Village Hive for, well, I've known you for almost two years now. And uh, he's a really great guy. So I hope you have your pen and paper ready if you're old school like me here <laughs> or you're going to be typing fast to take notes but remember please put any questions in the chat and if you could mute yourself for me uh, Richard and Agnes or I think our host um, will mute everyone and get started welcome Jean-Marie well welcome everyone and uh, thank you for being here you have so many things you could do at this moment and you chose to be here so I'm thankful for your presence and I hope my intention is to make it worth your while. Uh, uh, to start, before I start, I want to thank uh, the highs for giving me this opportunity to do this. Uh, this is a program by CPA Canada and uh, I'm here as a CPA ambassador and this is a program that they've done across Canada for the last couple of years and then one, I'm one of the volunteers. I'm going to read the, the uh, mission and uh, why are we doing this and why CPA is doing this. Okay, CPA Canada is working to address the growing social problem of financial literacy in Canada. Through its uh, financial literacy program, CPA Canada has the opportunity to become a fundamental driver of the economic health of individual Canadians, their businesses, and the broader economy. Its mission is to deliver unbiased, objective financial literacy education and information to improve the overall state of financial literacy in Canada. So I'm a, a CPA Canada, I'm a CPA ambassador, I uh, am a volunteer. I've done a number of those sessions and uh, uh, very much enjoy it and, and that's why I'm doing this. Uh, So before we start, I like to do a quick poll, uh, Mitch, if you can put up the poll, I like to see, just to, not for me, but uh, for, for everybody here, uh, the age group. Your, your name will, won't appear here, it's just a number, uh, so you'll be part of, in a sense, uh, the audience here, we got 16, 15 participants today. All right, so we got we got the uh, all age group here. All right, I don't know if you guys see see us. Uh, so we got a good a, a good uh, broad audience. Mitch, can they see this, Mitch? I, or should I share the results? Let me share the results. Yeah, I share the results. Yeah. Okay. 
All right, and uh, just give me a sense because we do a lot of those sessions as CPA does. Uh, this is one of one of the lunch and learn, and they've got over like forty different sessions uh, with different topics. This was one of the most popular one. Uh, they have other sessions on uh, effective tax strategies, retirement planning, uh, estate planning, uh, fraud protection. There's, uh, there's many. And uh, or even a lot of uh, sessions for small businesses, like startup companies. And uh, so all of that uh, available. Uh, there, so the presentation today, we're going to, I have a number of handouts that uh, Monica is going to send it to you after afterwards. So you don't have to Take note, you can take notes, but uh, the presentation will be available. I'll send you the whole PowerPoint and a couple of handouts that you're gonna get uh, at the end. Uh, so just, uh, just a kind of a, I guess, disclaimer or uh, just to set up your expectation. This session's name is 10 Healthy Habits of Financial Management. So you might, uh, the, after you've listened to me for an hour, uh, my goal is to finish by we're going to be done by one so i'll try to finish a little bit earlier so that i have some time for questions if you have any questions uh, uh but uh after you've listened to this you might fall into three categories that i like to mention that just at the beginning one is you might say oh i kind of know all that stuff like this is very like basic basic and i'm, I'm actually doing most of them so if you're doing all those habits already, uh, kudos to you because you're on the right track. And uh, this session just confirmed that you're doing the right thing. And so it's good that you get kind of a validation that you're doing is, is right. Uh, but most people would be in the second category. I think they kind of, oh, these are things, I, I know them, I know, but I do some of them, but not all of them. So when you hear a new habit, maybe you heard it before, or you're, but you're not doing, or it's the first time you hear it. So maybe it's something for you to take away today that maybe you could start doing. Uh, and then there's third category, and uh, I don't think there are a lot of people in there that will say, oh, all these are new, never heard of it before, never heard of all that stuff. Well, welcome, if that's your case, uh, great. Um, you, you get the most benefit. Uh, so in any case, any category, I think, yeah, hopefully you get something out of it. And uh, um, like I said, it's, it's very uh, nothing earth shattering you learn here, but knowing that these are the things that you do on a regular basis will help you uh, with your finance, personal finance. Uh, so here we go. Okay, so before, uh, one last thing before I start. I'll give you uh, maybe 50, 60 seconds. You can write in the chat what you think is one of the habits, one of the healthy habits of financial management. If you want to write three or four or five, that's, that's even better. But uh, if you play along, just write one and then uh, that gives you an idea in the end. Uh, we'll, we'll maybe go back to that, to that list and see uh, you know, how, how you guys answered. And uh, I'll give you... Uh, Maybe uh, for 30 seconds to do this. Take a look at the chat. Just wanted to mention as well to everyone at the bottom, you have little reactions. So if you like something Jean-Marie is saying, you can give them the thumbs up sign or the heart sign or the party sign because Jason's going to be really rich and throw a party and invite all of us. <laughs> uh, you guys are funny. Uh, okay, I, I'm going to start now. Okay, we'll, we'll keep those. Uh, we'll, we will come, we'll come back to that list after, all right? Uh, let me share my presentation. So, share. Let me 
you see the presentation now? Okay. So now I can't see, I can't, uh, I see only a few people. Uh, so one of the uh, good thing about doing uh, this session online, is more people can actually attend because if uh, this was live, a lot of you wouldn't be able to drive down here. So that's a big benefit, but for a presenter, one of the challenges, I can't see you guys. So I'm talking to my computer and I, I, I can't gauge whether, you know, what I'm saying is making any, uh, guys have any reaction. And uh, when you're in front of an audience, you can kind of feel how the audience is, is reacting to what you're saying. Uh, so anyway, that's okay. Uh, uh, so, let me get started. So this is a presentation by CPA Canada. So I'm going to just stick to the, the script because they've done a lot of research. This is what they came up with. And th this is presentation has been polished a few times. So the agenda today is we're going to look at the current, current habits, uh, uh, obviously 10 healthy habits of, of managed financial management. That's the title of the, of the talk today. You're going to get some tools and aids at the end. I'm going to mention, I'm going to send it to you. That's going to be helpful. Uh, a lot of stuff that available out there that uh, you can use and uh, it's very helpful for so resources. And I want to leave some time for Q&A at the end. I really want to finish by 12.59. Okay, so, so uh, this is a questionnaire by financial, financial fitness self-assessment. Uh, you're going to get this at the end. So I will not cover this now. I just want to mention, uh, we do this, this gives you an, ass an assessment of where, you know, where you are in terms of your financial fitness. Are these things, are these things you're doing or not? Uh, there's 20 questions here. Uh, so I encourage you to do this. I mean, there's no wrong and right answer. This is uh, just to find out where where you are and maybe things that you might consider to improve your financial health, I guess. Okay, so next. Oh, number one, uh, number one of the 10 healthy habits is know where you stand financially. So you know what your net worth is. Uh, it's a good exercise to do every six months, I think. It's a good idea to do this. So your net worth is the net of everything you own minus everything you owe. So your most people, their biggest asset is probably their house, their home. So that the value of your home minus all the debt that you have, probably the mortgage, uh, line of credit. Hopefully you don't have any credit card debt uh, that would be included in there as well. So it's a good idea to, uh, to measure your net worth uh, on a regular basis to see if it's growing or, you know, your, 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 it should grow. I mean, if you're working and all that, it should, uh, you have, if you're doing all those habits, then you should. Your cash flow, uh, so money coming in minus money coming out. And the coming inside, the, the money coming in is usually easy to, to determine because most people have a fixed salary unless you're, you work uh, uh, in sales maybe or you're an entrepreneur, uh, your income might fluctuate, but most people uh, have a fixed income. So the best thing to do is to control your spending. So it's good to know what your cash flow. Of course, a detailed budget. I think one of us, one of you, at least one of you, I mentioned one of the healthy habits to have a budget. And I'm not going to go into detail of how to do a budget. There's a whole another session on that. Uh, but uh, budgeting is uh, something that you might consider to do as well. Number two, I think the number two is. Probably the most important of all the habits, it's not work at science here, live within your means. You know, don't spend more than what you make. I always get a chuckle when I tell that uh, to people that that's the biggest secret. <coughs> Sorry. So how do you do that? It's easier said than done. Uh, for a lot of people, this is easy, but a lot of people struggle with that. 
So you're gonna get some tools on how you can make sure you live within your means. Okay, so one other way to live within your means is to pay yourself first. That's a good habit to have. So how you do, uh, you pay yourself first so that uh, before you pay everybody else. So a couple of ways you can do this is uh, set up your, let's say if you have a mortgage, set up your mortgage payment on the same day that you receive your, your pay. Like, you know, it's come in and out on the same day. Or if you're saving money for your RSP or retirement or investment as well, you, you do it on the same day you receive your income on that day, you make an automatic withdrawal uh, into your investment account. And then now uh, whatever is left is what you try to not overspend on those. At least you've, you've, you've uh, secured your investment and your uh, mortgage payment or your rent maybe, uh, you know, on the, on the day you pay your rent, you want to have the money go out in the same day as well. Uh, so this is pretty much, most of you might know or you know, already know that. I'm just reaffirming something that uh, is a good practice. Credit. So credit card, use responsibly. You know, they've done studies that uh, show that people who pay their expenses with cash instead of credit card, they actually spend 22% less than people who use credit card. So the suggestion is to pay everything with cash because then you'll spend less because the when you pay cash, it's this exchange of money that you see the money going out and then uh, uh, it gives you an awareness that you're spending. Whereas a credit card, and now you can use your phone, you can use your watch, and that's, uh, that's uh, easy money going out you don't even realize. But uh, today, I mean, it's difficult to pay everything cash, so it's more convenient to have a credit card. So my suggestion is to have not too many credit cards, I mean, you just need one or two. Uh, and uh, in my case, I have only one credit card and one debit card. That's all I have. It's much easier to track. I have only one statement to track. I have uh, a, uh, get a notification every time I spend money because your you, you source credit card now when you can have an email notification. It's a good check because uh, not only your spending, but that, you know if you're paying your utility bill, uh, there's a lot of cable or whatever that you're paying with your credit card it, it, you are aware of it right away when it, the spending goes through uh, also for fraud protection as well you know if it, ever somebody's using your card and you get the email you know immediately that it's not yours so it's a good thing to have a credit card uh, as long as you use responsibly and it also helps you build your credit uh, history so when we call credit it's debt, right? There's good debt and there's bad debt. So just briefly, uh, good debt. A good debt is uh, when you uh, take credit uh, to purchase an asset that <clears throat> increase in value. So house, for example, increase in value. And now, uh, bad debt is anything that well, the minute you, you buy it, it already depreciated. For example, you buy a car, you are walk with a car off the lot, you already lost at least 20% of the value of the car. So the way to deal with it is suggestion is to save your money, have the money and save before you purchase something so that you don't have to take uh, credit. That's one of the best practice. Okay, number five. Uh, so I'm going through the, those uh, quickly, and uh, I, I want to get to number eight. Uh, I'm uh, cautious of time as well. So number five is emergency fund, set up a financial safety net. The suggestion, you will read many books on this. They all say the same about the same thing. It's a good idea to have three to six months of living expenses as a cash reserve. So here it's, a, it's not your, free, your monthly expenses. Your currently monthly expenses probably have uh, some discretionary income that you put, uh, expenses that you could do without. So this is more, what are the essential 
expenses you have in a month. So if you were unfortunate to lose your job, you could cut a lot of stuff, but you still there's a minimum expenses that you have to you you can avoid. So that's what you're going to uh, save. So for three to six months of unavoidable expenses, such as rent, you know, mortgage and things like that. Uh, you have a minimum amount of food uh, sp uh, spending that you would need. Uh, so what are the minimum? So three to six months. Some people I know, they have 12 months saved, uh, but others, it's three months is enough, uh, uh, depending on, on what makes you more comfortable. And, but that is the minimum, you should have some. And then insurance, always a good idea, especially if you have a family, your kids, you want to have some life insurance as a minimum. If you're a young family, uh, you want coverage of at least 10 times your annual salary uh, for life insurance. Uh, other insurance that's actually critical is disability insurance. Uh, a lot of people don't think about this, but uh, you know, life insurance is when you're gone, you're gone. Uh, but disability, if you're disabled, you're still here. You, you got you got to spend, you got to live, and and uh, disability insurance is very very critical. Uh, at the same time, you know, sometimes you might not need it if you are retired and your little kids all gone to university and you don't have any mortgages left. Uh, there's no need for insurance because you're already okay, uh, so you can you can uh, cancel it if you that's what you, that's the case. Okay, well, we're 1234, we're good. Okay, this one is uh, wants versus needs number six. It's funny, and I look at this picture here, they, they updated this presentation, the same content, but before they had a picture of women's shoes. I said, you really need, so anyway, so needs, needs uh, now they got a bag uh, as an example. So needs uh, over uh, our overhead expense in your budget. I just talk about it a little bit like fixed costs, things I can't avoid. Uh, all your needs and wants are discretionary stuff that you can do without. And it says be media savvy. I mean, that's that's obvious. You know, the, the media and everywhere you go now, you, you, there's, there's, they, they're, they're trying to sell you something. Uh, you know, on your Instagram or Facebook, wherever you are, there's always ads now. Uh, so be be mindful of that. And, uh, you know, when you buy something, always think about whether it's a need or it's a want. Nothing wrong with want, as long as it's budgeted and it meets your overall, overall uh, plan, financial plan, and you plan for it, that's okay. But very often we buy out of impulse and that's not, that's not the right thing. I'm going to say one exception to this rule is, like I mentioned, it was it's a good thing they removed the women's shoes. I think women's shoes and running shoes are needs. Unless you got like 100 pairs, then, then it's a want. Okay, I'm deviating from the script here. It's my only attempt to do a joke. So I can't see you whether you're laughing or not. Okay, so. Needs and want. No, seriously, that's 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 something to you to think about when you buy uh, when you spending money. Okay, number seven. Delayed gratification and value based goal setting. An important life skill. I like with everything. It's always the people who are successful are really good at this. Uh, delay gratification. The example that they have in the uh, in my presentation here is, I know you guys, most of you may maybe heard about this story of the marshmallow uh, test that they did with kids. So they had kids, uh, young uh, five-year-old kids uh, sit in their room like the one I'm in right now. It's a very nice room I have is the, at the hive. They have this uh, podcast room and I'm using the equipment. Uh, very nice, yeah. So anyway, they put the, those kids in a, in, a, in a room like this, close the door, and they put a marshmallow in front of them. And they, they, tell, they told the kids, if you wait for a few minutes, you can get two marshmallow instead of one. And then uh, they, 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 they're filming them. And they would, kids, you know, some of them are like, it's very funny. They, they, they really want to eat it, and they look at it. Some can't resist it, just put it in their mouth. 
but those kids who are able to uh, resist and wait, uh, they've done a study over 14 years, and those kids actually are more successful. They are more confident. They, they can exercise they can self-control. They are they are more successful in life than those kids who couldn't wait. Uh, so it's a good habit to have for financial habit as well because you have to uh, you have a financial plan. You have to be very disciplined to reach your goal. So delay gratification is a, is something that uh, is helpful. And not a lot of people can do it though. Uh, tie goals with your values. Uh, one of the handouts I'm going to give you is a uh, question about your values. And uh, the reason we do this exercise is to see whether how you're spending is matching what, your, what you value. Like for example, if you say, I value my kids, I want my kids to go to university. And then you're spending your money on something else that, that uh, you know, don't, doesn't have any, uh, you know, you're not saving for, for, for their education to put money in your RESP for your kids, but you're spending money on something else. Then it's against your values. Uh, so it's good to know what do you value and are you actually saving or, or your plan, your financial plan is meeting your values. So you're going to have that the handouts as well at the end. We'll give it to you. Uh, uh, so goal setting, this is not a, a point. This is a point so following the delay gratification because it's a set goals. Um, so goals, of course, is important. You need goals. And one other way to do goals is to do budgeting. Uh, budgeting is a goal setting exercise for, fi for financial success. Uh, I just talk about the, the values, set goals, like what, knowing what your values are. Uh, and I'm going to, one of the things with, with goals, goals need to be smart. Uh, I think some of you already know this. So smart being a goal has to be specific, measurable, attainable, or action oriented, realistic, and have a time, time goal, time frame. Uh, there's a whole session, uh, especially with uh, uh, kids uh, in elementary school, high school, all the session in, uh, for, for students have a whole session on how to set goals. I'm not going to go through this. I mean, you, you guys probably know how to do this, uh, but uh, I want to just stress that the important thing is to have goals, not just financial goals, uh, you know, fitness goals, uh, relationship goals, like all our goals, stuff that, uh, you know, will help you get better in whatever you do. Uh, but financial goal for sure. And the time frame is important. You have to have a, a time frame on it because uh, you could set a goal and never reach, and you don't have a time on it. You, you have to figure out when do you want to, to reach that goal. Okay, number eight. This is where I wanted to make sure I got to number eight. So we are twelve thirty. It's pretty good. Huh? Track your spending. So I always say you got to track your spending. This is, I think, number two. I, I would on my list, anyways, uh, of uh, financial habits. You know, you want to spend less than you earn, but you got to. How do you know whether you're spending less than you earn, or how do you know uh, whether you're spending based on your values, based on your goals? Uh, you got to track your spending. So there's a a lot of financial, you know planner and finance people out there who help you with your, fi uh, your financial planner, they'll sell you investments or insurance. Uh, you know, everybody, a mortgage, like uh, people approach you and they, they usually, uh, like I don't, want, I don't want to say I'm, I'm better than them or, or, or anything like that, but everybody is working for a company and they want to sell you something. And, uh, you, 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 you have, so when, when you go to a normal financial planner, they're going to tell you uh, this investment is good for whatever the reason is, X, Y, Z, is it good for tax, is it good for the return is good and all that. But uh, not a lot of those financial planners will help you with your spending and see where the opportunity lies in terms of where you're, you're, how you're spending your money. And I think this is one of the most important habits because you could, you could, 
you know, you could do things for your kids. You want to give more to your charity or you want to save money for your retirement. But if you're, not, if you're spending money on stuff that, you know, you, you don't have much savings, there's nothing you could, I mean, there's no, no plan to do or no financial plan. Uh, so I always think it's always start with spending. As basic as that is, is starting your spending, I think is one of the most important uh, financial habits. So uh, very often when, when I have people do this, it's an eye opener as much as they know it's a good thing to do and they don't do it, but when they do it, they realize, you know, I thought, I thought that I did realize I was spending so much on this and that. You know, only when they track it that they realize. And uh, so, yeah. I think I've made my point here that this is important. So how you do it, there's all kinds of ways to track your spending. You could use an app, software, spreadsheet. Uh, and I've done all of that. I find the best, the best, the best tool to, to track your spending is to write it down. So I have, uh, I bought my own uh, little, I have a little black book here. I write, I write down all my, I don't know if you can see it. I, I write down my expenses line by line. Uh, and it doesn't take long. Like uh, I do that every day or so uh, because I get the email notification. So I write it down. And then at the end of the month, I have an Excel sheet that uh, I put uh, all my spending in different category. Uh, I'll talk about that a little bit later. The category matches another website that I use. Anyway, I don't want to go in detail here, but uh, the I find when you write down, it's actually sticks is as if you're you're doing you're paying cash because you when you write it down it it connects to your brain that that spend was you you actually spend money on this item and if you don't then you don't have any idea because you you, you know you just spend it and uh, you don't remember okay so of course and you once you have your spending you compared to your budget if you have a budget uh, gives you an idea whether you do how you're doing okay uh next point is uh it's a it's a good point uh i i'm a believer that you you can uh, do well financially on your own there's so much information out there and you just have to make sure you get the right information uh but there's nothing like having uh, an accountability partner so in in your case it could be a good friend it, it could be your better half somebody you trust that uh, you share your financial plan with that person and then you report how you're doing every, you know, every, at least every three months or every couple of months, you, you promise this person that you're going to give, him, give that person a report on how you're doing against your goals. And uh, there's nothing more like powerful than knowing that you got to tell somebody whether you've been doing it well or not. So that applies for Anything else, actually, not just financial, any goals you have, you have somebody you can talk to that's going to help you. Uh, that's, that's very, very helpful. Oh, I'm only at nine. That's uh, almost done. Okay, 10. Uh, divide and conquer. So this is a lot of information. It's a lot of information. And uh, where do you start? Uh, so like everything, you start small, you start with one step, one step at a time. Uh, so you had this little presentation here. So maybe that's where you start. You got oh. those nine, 10 habits here. You just adjust, see whether you're doing it and is it something you should do? Uh, one habit at a time. Uh, it's your money, your future. Uh, it's, it's commitment. It's deciding to do it. I had uh, this uh, group this morning with kids and uh, great uh, seven kids, and uh, I just copied this little quote from them here for for their presentation. There were there were there was a presentation on savings for them and savings and bank accounts. So it says small changes make big differences, and healthy habits is a mindset. Is a mindset. Uh, it says here. Saving is a mindset which we have to train ourselves to keep top of mind when making daily financial decisions, choices. Uh, so you have to commit and do it. 
yes. um, but it's a commitment to do it daily. So how you do it daily, there are many of ways you can do this. Like I mentioned, one is, is to, to be able to report to somebody, but maybe you have your own scorecard you, you once a week or even daily, you ask yourself the question, how am I doing financially? Like, well, the things I've done right today or what the thing I can do better tomorrow? I haven't done so good and do it tomorrow. Uh, so uh, I encourage you to, to think about it and make a commitment to do this. Uh, it will really improve your finance, your finance, financial health. Okay, so these are these are uh, the tools that you're going. I'm going to make available to you, and Monica is going to send that to you later today. Uh, these are the four tools. Okay, uh, I talked about the financial fitness self assessment. So here, as you can see, you can see those questions here. Uh, so I encourage you to go through this. This is one thing you can you can do for yourself. Uh, as this is great uh, budget calculator, this link here, you, you're going to have that in the PDF uh, uh, I'm going to send you later today. Check this website. This is by, I know it's by the government, this Canada.ca, but they're doing a great job. They've done a great job with this website. There's all kinds of financial, good financial information. <coughs> Sorry, available. And uh, they even have a budget tool. And budget, the, the neat thing with the budget tool that they have is, if you do your budget using that tool, it, it gives you an idea like, how are you doing compared to the population? Like this line item on average, Canadians spend that much. Uh, so it's a lot of information, a lot of, they've done a really good job of, of making it uh, easy to understand. And I use it personally. Yeah, I use those tools myself and, uh, I found it very, very helpful. So I encourage you to check this website. They have a budget tool. They have a lot of uh, information on finances, finance, personal finance. Uh, uh, every, uh, what you, uh, you're going to get a goal setting worksheet as well. So the goal setting worksheet is, it, it uses a smart, the smart uh, acronym, but the more uh, there's, you know, accountability, like, like it's a good uh, tool model for you to set goals that you can use, not only for financial or personal goals, other goals you have. I mean, it's, it's a, it's a you, you know, probably you, or you, you guys already know how to do this, but it's a good refresher on how to set goals. I think we all need to get uh, goals to, uh, so that, you know, when we wake up in the morning, we got something to work out. It's, uh, and then the value uh, validator worksheet that you're gonna get that as well. So here's some publications and uh, these are from CPA Canada. So if you click on the, the link here, you get some of the publications on uh, CPA. They're all really good, good, good source of information. Uh, you, you click on this here, there is a lot of information on financial literacy here as well. Uh, and if you check the Con Financial Consumer Agency of Canada, they got a lot of good stuff. There's a lot, a lot of places you can get information. I tell you, like uh, there's an infinite number of inf information out in the uh, on the web. And, uh, I like to go to the Canada CN and CPA Canada because they're objective. They're not, they're not selling you on a, on a specific thing. Uh, you know, somebody put a YouTube video. Sometimes, very often, they have a, an agenda. I'm not saying that they they, they don't mean well, but uh, they usually have a, an agenda behind it, some, some, some tool, some investment, or maybe that they want to sell. But as you go, those, those, those websites suggesting here is very objective. There's no, no like agenda or... So the other one that I look at, that I don't have it in the list is, is FP Canada. It's Financial Planning Canada. If you check their website as well, there's a lot of good stuff there as well. So I think I've given you enough information and let me see else. So we're going to do the Q&A soon. Uh, 